Today in our 2017 Ford F-150, we're going to be installing Airlift's Load Lifter 5000 Air Helper Springs. These are available for four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive F-150s. These airbags are going to provide up to 5,000 pounds of load leveling support. Now this doesn't increase how much your vehicle can haul, just how much support the airbags can provide to your suspension system. These can be particularly useful if you're loading down the back and it changes the geometry of your vehicle by sagging the back and bringing the front up. This changes how your tires are contacting the road, lowering your handling and braking performance. Additionally, it causes your headlights to point up towards the sky, which drastically reduces nighttime visibility. By bringing the back up and leveling it back out, you restore that lost handling and braking performance, as well as your nighttime vision. The airbags can be adjusted from 5 to 100 PSI pressure, 5 essentially being your normal unloaded ride, and 100 being the maximum support that they can offer. They can be adjusted independently from left to right to help adjust for any uneven loads that you may be hauling. One thing that sets these airbags apart from others is the internal jounce pumper located inside the airbag. This offers you extra reliability that's not found on those that does not have it. In case your airbags lose pressure, there's the jounce bumper inside of these that can act as a standard factory jounce bumper, providing you that support in those extreme scenarios. And it can also help prevent you from bottoming out. Here we've got our vehicle unloaded without our airbags installed. And from the ground to the bottom of our fender well here, it's gonna be about 40 and a quarter inches at the back. And at the front, we're gonna have about 37 inches. Now we've placed a large tank full of water in the back of our truck to simulate a heavy load. And with our airbags not installed, our suspension has dropped down nearly two inches. And in the front here, our vehicle's lifted up nearly an inch and a half. Being able to bring your vehicle back to its factory ride height while carrying a heavy load, it's gonna help bring back that lost handling and braking performance due to the geometry changes of your truck. It's gonna help your tires contact the road as they were intended to under its factory suspension, but you're gonna get that hauling capacity you bought the truck for. Before you begin your installation, you may wanna lift up the body of your whole truck to give you a little more room between your axle and your frame. We're using a steeple jack to just screw up the back to put a little bit of pressure on it to help give us that extra clearance. That'll make the installation much easier. We'll begin our installation under the rear of the vehicle, just above the rear axle. We're on our passenger side here and we're gonna remove the jounce bumper. Now all the things we're doing here, we're gonna be doing on the driver's side as well. We're gonna use a 13 millimeter socket to remove the bolt holding our jounce bumper on. We'll set this aside as we won't be reinstalling it. On the rear side of the rear axle, we're going to need to remove the 10 millimeter head bolt using a 10 millimeter socket on this bracket here, as the bracket's going to have to be spaced out to fit our lift loader brackets in. So we'll just take that loose and we just need to pull it out just a little bit. Next, we'll install our upper bracket. These are labeled left and right. So you can see R here as we're on the passenger side, our right side. Make sure the hole is towards the rear and the bent flange is on the inside. Take the black bolt in the kit with the black lock washer on it. And we're going to thread that up to where our jounce bumper used to be. We'll then tighten it down with a 17 millimeter socket. Then torque your hardware to the specifications found in your instructions. You'll receive self-tapping screws that come in our kit. See the little notch cut out in there indicating it's a self-tapper. We're going to use that to tap the hole here on the front side of our axle. 
So we're just going to start that by hand. Then use a 13 millimeter socket to thread it in. Once you've got the screw threaded in, we're going to take it right back out. But now we've got threads tapped into our spring perch. We'll now put our lower bracket on. And these ones are symmetrical, so there is no left and right. Either one will fit on either side. You want to push that in, line it up with the holes in your spring perch. We can then take our bracket and reinstall it. We're not going to be using the factory hardware though. We're going to be using the flange bolts that come included in the kit. We're going to line that back up, thread it in. Now we don't want to tighten it all the way down right now. We just want to leave it a little bit loose. Then on the opposite side, we can reinstall that self-tapping screw. Again, we want to leave it a little loose. So our bracket, we can still kind of move it around as we need to. Now we'll install our carriage bolts. Now this is the only difference between your four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive installations is how these bolts install. On our four-wheel drive installation, they go from top down through our opening in our brackets. On our two-wheel drive, it'll go from the bottom up. You want to remember if you're doing the two-wheel drive, the clamp must be put on before you put your bolt up. Since we have a four-wheel drive here, we're going to be putting that top down. It's a little tight getting it in there, so you might have to kind of thread it down until you get past the head here at the top where the bracket is. And we're going to do that with the back bolt as well. Now we can slide our strap on the bottom and secure it using a flat washer followed by a lock nut. If this was a two wheel drive, those would be exactly the same, just on top. We can then tighten it down with a 15 millimeter socket. You just want to tighten it back and forth, making sure they tighten down evenly. We can then torque those bolts to the specifications found in our instructions. And we want to tighten and torque our bolts that we installed in the side of our bracket as well. And then you'll torque down the side bolts that we put on our lower bracket to the specifications found in your instructions. Next you'll pre-assemble your airbags, place your roll plate on top, and then install your air fitting down in the air fitting slot through the open hole. Then tighten that down with a 7 16 wrench until you've got a couple of threads with sealant on them submerged within the threads on the airbag. Then set your upper bracket onto your airbag, line up the holes. There will be a cutout for your fitting here and they're labeled left and right to make it easy for you. We'll then take the shorter hex bolts with a lock washer and a flat washer on it and use that to connect it to the top of the airbag. You can then tighten it down with a 15 millimeter socket and torque it to the specifications found in your instructions. Take your airbag and set it on top of your lower bracket. Take the shorter carriage bolts that come in your kit. Those are going to slide down through the upper bracket installed on the frame and through the upper bracket installed on the airbag. Now we'll install a flat washer followed by a lock nut. You'll tighten and torque these down as well using a 15 millimeter socket. Now we can take our bottom roll plate, slide it between the airbag and the lower bracket, and then you're going to want to lower that jack down to bring the airbag closer to the lower bracket to make it easier to get the bottom hardware in. We'll now use the same hardware we did to get the top roll plate installed, the hex bolt followed by lock washer and flat washer, threaded into the bottom of our lower bracket here, lining up the holes with our roll plate and airbag. You'll tighten and torque these down as well. <laughs> 
With all of our hardware in place, we'll repeat this process on the other side, and then we can run our airlines. Your kit comes with an airline hose that has pre-installed air inlet fittings on them. So these are going to go towards the rear of the vehicle or really wherever you'd like them to be where you can access it to air up your airbags. Since there's one pre-installed on each end, that'll give you enough hose to run one to your left and then run another to your right airbag. So you can air them up individually. Our customers requested to have a single air inlet to fill both of his airbags simultaneously. We're gonna be using a Union to do that. If you need a Union T fitting, you can pick one up here at eTrailer.com. So you're gonna choose a location for your end here. We're gonna mount ours right here in our hitch. We've drilled out a 3 8 hole to do so. Before you slide it through, you wanna place a nut on the valve here and then put a star washer on after that. We'll now slide it through the hole that we made. Place the rubber washer on it, followed by a flat washer and another nut. You'll do this again if you're gonna be having independent left and right inflation valves. And you don't want to really tighten these too tight. You can go back and just snug it down with a wrench a little bit, but you don't want to over tighten those as it is a brass fitting, so the ends are so the threads are fairly so, so the threads are fairly soft and are easily stripped. So we're just gonna snug it down just a little bit. Now if you're gonna install it like we did, we took ours and ran it down the hitch and then we went up on top of the driver's side frame rail and just followed that all the way forward to our airbag, zip tying it to the factory wiring along the way. Once we get up to our airbag here, the fitting is on the other side. So we just wanna make sure we've got enough length to reach over. So we're gonna put our key fitting here at about this point. You wanna cut your airline. Make sure to use a pair of tubing cutters because you wanna cut it square and flush. You don't wanna use side cutters or scissors to cut this because it won't seal properly if you do. So we've made our cut there. Now we'll take our T fitting and this just simply slides right in. It's a quick connect. So I like to kind of push it in and out a couple of times just to make sure it's fully seated. And from our T here, we're gonna have one piece of airline go off to the passenger side airbag and the other off to our driver's side here. So I'm going to route the airline over to the airbag and plug it in. The airbag itself has the same type of fitting as our T-fitting here. It simply pushes in, quick connect. So just like before, I like to kind of push in and out to make sure it's fully seated. And then we're just going to get that length of hose kind of mocked up. We'll cut it and plug it into our T-fitting. Now we'll do the same thing with our other airbag. We've routed it from our passenger airbag now over, make our cut, and put that into our T-fitting. Now that everything's installed, you can just go back and zip tie up all of your airlines, making sure you avoid any moving objects, such as your steering and suspension components, and anything excessively hot, such as your exhaust. We're now ready to test it out. Go ahead and inflate your airbags. You wanna to go to about 75 pounds, and then check for any leaks. Now we'll take some soapy water and spray all of our fittings, both at our airbags and at the back here, and check for the presence of bubbles. Now there is gonna be bubbles when you spray it, that's the soap that's coming out of it. You're looking for continually repeating bubbles, which is an indication that air is leaking out, creating those bubbles. We've got none here, we'll check it at our airbags and at our T-fitting. And with no bubbles present, our system's operating properly, and we're ready to hook up our trailer and hit the road. And now with our airbags installed and inflated, we're only down about a half an inch here in the back. And in the front, our suspension is about the same as where it was when we started. And that completes our installation of Airlift's Load Lifter 5000 air helper springs on our 2017 Ford F-150.